In 2013, Microsoft and then new company Respawn Entertainment, formed by ex-Call of Duty Modern Warfare veterans Vince Zampella and Jason West, would announce a brand new IP that would be exclusive to the Xbox and would feature on Microsoft's next generation console, the Xbox One. And that game was Titanfall. Titanfall would eventually release on March 11th, 2014 for both Xbox One and Windows PC. This would be the debut title from Respawn and the hype surrounding the game would be massive. In Titanfall, you play as an unnamed pilot and have control over a mech style machine known as a Titan. The game is a multiplayer shooter that takes advantage of Microsoft Cloud Computing to manage NPCs that will fight both against you as well as on your team. The game is exclusively multiplayer only. There is no single player campaign, nor is there any form of system link support. All of this while competing in a six versus six online multiplayer arena. The basic premise of Titanfall is that you start each match as your pilot and after selecting your loadout, you are thrust into the world. There are 15 maps that you can play. You start with three weapons, a normal weapon, such as an assault rifle, a sidearm, such as a pistol, and an anti-Titan weapon for taking out enemy Titans. You can also throw grenades, cloak for a small duration, and have access to things like a better radar. The pilot can not only run, they can also double jump to reach high ground. They can also perform things like wall runs. This is a very vertical game. After a set duration counts down, your Titan will be available for you to summon and use. And from here, you have access to additional weapons, which are much more powerful than the pilot's weapons. But once you are in a Titan, the game never feels overpowered. It's still very well balanced, and that is one of the great features of the game. For example, the Titan cannot jump to high ground, but it can very quickly move out of tight situations. As you progress, you will complete challenges, gain more experience, and unlock things like new loadouts, pilots, and Titans that have different skills. Titanfall was very well received in 2014 when it launched. Perhaps it didn't hit the heights that everyone expected, but it still reviewed very well. It was a high point for Xbox One owners and a game that I'm personally a big fan of. On launch, it came with 15 maps, with additional maps added later as DLC. Respawn developed Titanfall with a heavily modified version of Valve's Source Engine and targets 60 FPS at 762p on Xbox One. And for the most part, it gets there but there are moments of slowdown and stutter during firefights. We knew a lot about the Xbox One version when it came out, but it's the Xbox 360 version of Titanfall that I want to focus on today. The game by all rights is a technical masterpiece that really has no business running the way it does on the Xbox 360. The entire game is here with no compromises other than a graphical downgrade. It features both an uncapped frame rate, which in my experience sits anywhere between 30 to 50 frames per second, occasionally hitting 60 when there's not much action on screen. This may sound quite mundane, but in fact, the game is heavily optimized and in parts even better than the Xbox One version. But there's also a 30 FPS frame limiter option as well. And in my experience, this is the way you want to play the game. It's a neat touch. Titanfall on the Xbox 360 was developed by none other than Bluepoint Games, best known for their work on the Sony PlayStation over the years with remakes of games such as Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, and recently Demon's Souls for the PlayStation 5. Bluepoint was not an exclusive Sony studio until recently when they were acquired as part of PlayStation Studios. But Titanfall on the Xbox 360 would be a different challenge for Bluepoint. One that would take them outside their comfort zone. Bluepoint is best known for HD remakes and remasters. Yet when we talk about Titanfall on the Xbox 360, this is a down port from the Xbox One version on hardware that launched in 2005, nine years before Titanfall ever released. So how was Bluepoint able to pull this off on the Xbox 360? Well, first of all, before we jump in and answer that, Let's do a quick primer of the Xbox 360 and Xbox One. The 360 
launched in 2005 and features an IBM Power PC based CPU known as Xenon clocked at 3.2 GHz. Xenon contains three physical cores with each core capable of simultaneously processing two threads, therefore operating up to six threads at once. There's also 512 megabytes of GDDR3 RAM and 10 megabytes of superfast ED RAM. Its underlying graphics API is DirectX 9. The Xbox One, or VCR as I call it, released in 2013 and features a custom 1.75 GHz AMD 8-core APU running x86 instructions as well as 8 GB of DDR3 RAM with 5 GB available to games. This is a 10x increase in memory over the Xbox 360. Xbox One games usually target either 720p or 1080p. Its original graphics API is DirectX 11 with a shift to DX12 later on in its life cycle. Titanfall was developed with next generation in mind. Respawn wanted all textures to be available in memory all the time with little to no streaming whatsoever. The Xbox One increased memory space was perfect for this with the entire set of textures loaded up in Xbox RAM, taking full advantage of that five gigabytes of available space. For the Xbox One, Respawn would heavily modify the source engine. As an example of this, the map Fracture loads up to 22 million triangles of geometry on the Xbox One running at 60 frames per second, for the most part at least, at 762p. And of course, there would be the power of the cloud. This would manage NPC AI, freeing up the console to perform its main game logic and run its systems. For the Xbox 360 version then, Bluepoint had its work cut out for them. 5 gigabytes of asset data simply wouldn't work on the Xbox 360 without building a sophisticated texture streaming system. And even then, there would be no guarantee that the game would run any faster than a few FPS. Bluepoint started with a version of Source that ran on the Xbox 360 that would be provided to them by Respawn, but they found that to be mostly incomplete. When they were able to get the Source plus Titanfall running on the 360, they found that it used up around half the 360 available memory, even before models, textures and maps were loaded into the game. According to Bluepoint co-founder Andy O'Neill, with an interview with Eurogamer in 2014, he said, we started to figure out how hard this was going to be the first time we got the game running on the 360. With a single player, our average frame rate in Fracture was around 5 FPS, and that's without any textures. Although the Source engine ran on the Xbox 360, the takeaway here is that Titanfall used a heavily modified version of it with thousands of thousands of changes. Bluepoint knew that for the Xbox 360 version to work, it would require a massive refactor of code. Just tweaking the source engine here and there would not be enough. And according to Andy, we've replaced the world renderer, collision system, visibility system, animation system, asset system, asset pipeline, audio system, and stuffed in a streaming system and compressed the crap out of the assets to make it fit on a DVD. The most fascinating part of the port to the Xbox 360 would be the memory management. We said earlier that the Xbox One has 10 times available memory than the Xbox 360, and squeezing everything in 512 megabytes of memory would be the hardest problem to overcome. Bluepoint would first strip out the source engine to its bare essentials, removing any unnecessary things such as the local server, and overall reducing overhead. With this change, however, the game still struggled to run on development kits that had one gigabyte of memory on board. Bluepoint did not want to change any core assets or compromise on quality, so they would develop a sophisticated streaming system to use on the Xbox 360 version. For the technically minded, we stream medium resolution textures from the hard drive, which has the best seek time and can load textures quickly. The top texture MIPS are streamed from the DVD with additional compression for throughput. Also, having the top MIPS on the DVD avoids us having to copy them into the cache partition, which is good because we're pretty light on space there. One interesting side effect of this method is there was no way to install Titanfall, at least initially, as a game on demand title because it would require the physical media to be inserted into the DVD drive to stream its texture assets from. On the Xbox 360, Titanfall runs at a native resolution of 1040 by 600 
This might seem like an odd resolution, but this render target was chosen as it fits neatly in the 10 megabytes of available ED RAM on the Xbox 360, considering that the Xbox One version runs at a native 762p, this reduction in fidelity is not as a significant drop as one would expect, especially on aging hardware released in 2005. Bluepoint would also optimize to get as high of a frame rate as possible. The Source Engine already has a system known as PVS, which determines which surfaces should be visible on screen and which shouldn't. This of course is done in real time. However, on the Xbox 360, Bluepoint would replace this by pre-calculating visibilities on a massive server farm and applying the results in the game as a static set of visibilities. It worked and provided a massive speed up in performance. Shadows were also switched from dynamic to pre-calculated and performing tasks such as LOD calculations and triangle culling were moved to the GPU. With skilled engineers who knew the Xbox 360, they performed function level optimizations and incorporated VMX instructions to squeeze as much performance from the engine as possible. The Xbox 360 version even uses the Azure Cloud in the exact same way as the Xbox One and PC versions. No other changes were made. And the result of all this is an incredible port to the Xbox 360 that could have very easily have been far worse or even scrapped in favor of the Xbox One and PC versions of Titanfall. The risk here was massive, but Bluepoint pulled off the incredible. It's fluid and runs very well on the aging hardware. Bluepoint would also work at the same time as Respawn as they were working on the main game, and in the end would only be about four weeks behind the mainline versions when the Xbox 360 version of Titanfall released in April of 2014. So, is Titanfall on the Xbox 360 an impossible port? Well, I absolutely think it is. It definitely fits in that mold, and it's one of those really ambitious projects that could have really just gone bad for Bluepoint, but they are such an experienced group of people and an amazing team out there that of course the project was always going to be in absolutely safe hands but i'm going to leave it here for this episode but before i go there was a couple of things i wanted to mention first of all most of this information was taken from a digital foundry article that was posted on eurogamer so credit goes to richard ledbetter and the df team for this interview it's all the way back in 2014 and it's a long time ago but i will leave a link to that full interview in the description below because it contains a lot more information about the technical side of titanfall on the 360 what i've covered in this episode does cover most of it but there is a lot more information and i definitely suggest you take a look at that article again i'll leave that in the description below and the last thing is trying to play titanfall on your Xbox One or your Xbox 360 in 2022 is near impossible. I was able to secure a digital version via a key site, but I ended up paying probably a lot more money than I really should have. And it's a real shame because I know that a lot of people out there are very unhappy with the way Titanfall has been treated by EA over the years. It's pretty much just been abandoned, which is a real shame, but I've had a lot of fun going back and revisiting Titanfall and I will say there is still a small but very active community that is still playing the game, both on the Xbox One, PC of course, as well as the Xbox 360. I can still get into 360 matches, even though there is only probably less than a thousand people, probably less than 500 people honestly playing Titanfall on the 360 these days. There is still a group of people that still play the game and it is a lot of fun to play and I had a lot of fun making this episode for you guys. But we are going to leave it here for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to put a like on it and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.